Hey, what's up guys? So I've been noticing a lot of comments lately regarding the way I level shift. And what I mean by that is shifting the signals from my 5 volt Arduino down to 3.3 volts to my 3.3 volt devices. Because if you don't do that, you'll blow up your Wi-Fi module, Bluetooth module, TFT screen, RFID reader, whatever. So you need to shift those signals down to 3.3 volts and I'll even show you how to shift them back up to 5 volts and uh, I'll break a few of the methods down. I'll show you the signals up on the scope here and uh, hopefully it'll all make sense by the end of this video. Let's, let's take a closer look at what I'm talking about. Okay, so here are a couple of the uh, quick and dirty methods I've used for level shifting. Um, a much better way to level shift is to use a buffer, something like the CD4050. And I'll put, uh, I'll put links in the description below uh, for a couple of the different buffers you can use to level shift. Um, but for most of my projects, I'm only level shifting like one or two signals. So, you know, like the ESP8266 project, I only needed to level shift one signal. And that was from the Arduino's TX pin to the ESP8266 uh, RX pin. So shifting that 5 volt TX down to 3.3 volts for the part. Uh, the Arduino accepts the 3.3 volts coming back and it sees those highs as logic highs, the 3.3 volts, so we're good there. Um, but anyway, uh, here's three methods. Uh, the first one is a simple voltage divider. Uh, so you put your 5 volts in, you get your 3.3 volts out. Uh, to keep the math simple, I'm just dividing down to 3 volts. So you've got a 2K and a 3K and it divides it down and you know obviously this is the simplest method but it's also the weakest method because it is very slow so i'll show you that in a second on the scope where you know maybe if you're if you're operating or you're trying to you know if you're shifting down a, a really slow like serial signal or something like that with a slow baud rate this this method might work for you and i'll show you why why this one fails at higher speeds um, I rarely, if ever, use that technique to level shift. Uh, down here, I use this one all the time, and this is a, uh, an NPN transistor-based level shifter, and this is based, uh, the, the, the circuit I have uh, on the breadboard right now uses a 2N3904. It's got the base pulled up via a 1K, pull, 1K ohm pull-up to 3.3 volts, your low voltage, and the collector is pulled up with a 10k to 3.3 volts as well and right we connect the low voltage side directly to the collector high voltage side connects directly to the emitter so this is where your 5 volts would connect to and this is where your low voltage pin would connect to um, but basically how this works and we'll walk through it here so let's say we're going this way high voltage to low voltage we're shifting down so with a logic high here so 5 volts here Okay, our VBE is reverse biased. Our, our collector here is pulled up to 3.3, so our VBC is sitting there at zero volts. So that's, that's not, we, we haven't forward made the VBC connection forward bias. So the transistor would be off, so high here, and that's pulled up high. Your low voltage side would be pulled up to 3.3. As soon as you make this here zero volts, you then made this junction here forward bias from VBE. The transistor starts to conduct and you pull this point here down low. So you get low on that side. Now what's cool about this, and that's how it works from high voltage to low voltage. And I can't remember where I saw this circuit first. It was in some reference design somewhere and I can't remember where, otherwise I'd, I'd put a link in the description below for where that circuit is. Um, but what's cool about this is that this whole thing is bi-directional. So if you wanted to shift from 3.3 back up to 5 volts, you can do that. So let's, let's pull up the emitter to 5 volts. And we'll put a 10K right there, okay? So same thing. Uh, so on the low voltage side, we'll make high. So we'll make this at 3.3, okay? Same situation as before, okay? We haven't made a VBC. Our VBE still is reverse bias, so the transistor is off, meaning that this is pulled up high. Now, as soon as we go low here, we've now created a VBC junction, 
which is kind of interesting. I don't, you don't really see transistors used like this. And I think this is, um, I think this mode of operation is called something like reverse, reverse active mode or something like that, where you're create when you're where you're turning it on by making a VBC uh, voltage. Okay. So we've we've made VBC forward forward biased, and then this actually turns on and will 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 create some collector current here to drive this point here low. Okay. So this would be at zero volts. Kind of an interesting way to use a transistor, but this does work, okay? And that's how the transistor method works. Down here is kind of a cool technique, and I've been using this recently uh, with the ESP8266 modules. Um, and this is a MOSFET-based level shifter, and I'm using an N-channel MOSFET, the 2N7000, and we've got the drain, the source is over here, there's the gate. The gate's connected right up to our low voltage side, the 3.3. The source is pulled up with a 10K ohm resistor to 3.3. And the drain is connected right over to our high voltage, and then right over here is our low voltage connected to the source. So it kind of looks like the transistor-based method. So let's work through this, going from high voltage to low voltage. So if this was at five volts here and I'm showing this diode here this is inherent to the actual MOSFET it's not a separate diode so if we put five volts here okay this diode is blocking that the transistor or I'm sorry the MOSFET looks like it might be on since you know we have this 3-3 connected right to the gate but if you look at it it's all about the VGS so this point here is actually at 3-3 so you have 3-3 and 3-3 so your VGS is at zero volts, so it's actually not on, it's off. So if you put five volts here, it's blocked and it's just sitting there at five volts. This is being pulled high to three, three. So that's at three, three. So five, five volts, three, three, high, high, we're good. If we go low here, now suddenly this diode will start to conduct, okay? And as soon as this point drops down to, a, to the threshold point for VGS to start kicking in, so as soon as that happens, this MOSFET turns on, and then we have this point here go low, okay? So it's kind of cool how that works. And this one is also, uh, this one's also bi-directional here too, so let's do that. If we go the other way, pull that up high with a 10K, and we're going this way now, so shifting from three three to five volts, it's the same exact situation where we go, let's start with high. So if we make this 3.3 volts here, our VGS is zero. It's not on. This signal just gets pulled up to five volts. So high, high. If we go low over here, zero volts, now we've just created a VGS, uh, a VGS voltage there. We've turned the MOSFET on, and then that zero volts carries right through and this signal here, the high voltage side, goes low. So that's how it shifts. So now let's go to the scope and actually see these three circuits in action. It'll make a little bit more sense. So the first circuit we're gonna look at is the resistor divider method. And you can tell on the, on the scope here, the first, uh, the first channel here, the top one, is the input signal. The bottom one here, this channel two, is the output. And you can see that it's rise time and fall time are kind of weak. Um, but it, it does appear to be working. But note that this is at 125 kilohertz. So that's a pretty slow speed. Let's see what happens when we increase that speed to say, let's try one megahertz and see what it looks like then. Okay, so you can clearly see that that rise time plays a huge role, rise time and fall time, a huge role in the, the output signal now when you increase that data speed. Um, this might still barely work. It does appear to be, hmm, it kind of depends on when the Arduino on the other side is actually going to, when it, how it samples that and if it would register that as a logic high. Um, Right now I have an Arduino actually driving this signal. So that input signal, the top one here, is the output of the Arduino. Um, 
but the output is not connected to anything. So that signal would actually probably just get worse if I connected it to an Arduino because the input impedance on the Arduino and that the, uh, the um, stray capacitance, you know, all the parasitics. Um, I am using a breadboard for this little demo circuit here. So, you know, the pin to pin capacitances are all playing a huge role in this. Um, so that's at one meg. Why don't we look at what it's doing at eight megahertz? Let's try that. Okay, so in this, with this frequency at, at eight megahertz, the output is unrecognizable and is completely useless. You can tell that it's not even going all the way back down to zero. It can barely get up to three volts. So this is definitely the point, not the point, but this is a point where the, uh, the resistor divider network method fails. So now let's move on to the uh, transistor method. So here's the transistor method, and I've lowered the frequency back down to 125 kilohertz. And you can see that the, the output looks pretty good. It's tracking the input nicely. Um, we've reduced the rise and fall time dramatically from the resistor method. Uh, let's try increasing that up, up to uh, one megahertz and see what happens. Okay, so even at one megahertz, it's looking much better than the resistor method. Uh, you can start seeing the uh, the slow rise time there, and it is it might be getting close to where it would stop working or registering a logic high. So let's let's keep increasing this frequency and let's see what happens. So okay, so here we are at eight megahertz, and it does appear to be tracking the input signal, but now that rise and fall time is playing a huge role and. Uh, I wouldn't trust this as a uh, as a good level shifter for an 8 megahertz signal. Uh, let's move on to the MOSFET method and, and see if that performs any better. Okay, so here we are at 125 kilohertz, and the signal looks great on the output. So let's keep moving and crank this up to 1 meg. Okay, even at 1 meg, our output signal looks clean. Uh, let's keep moving. Okay, so now we're at 8 megahertz, and the output signal um, looks pretty, uh, pretty good. Um, but then again, the input signal doesn't look all that great either. And that's probably due to the, uh, to the, uh, the crazy setup I have here on the bench with uh, the breadboard and the long wires and everything. But at least the output signal is tracking the input signal. So... This looks pretty good. There's a little bit of a dip there, so the the, the output seems to be ringing a little bit. Um, that, again, might be due to the whole setup I have here. But other than that, the MOSFET method outperforms the transistor and the resistor divider network by, by a, a large margin. So anyway, uh, that is just a few quick and dirty level shifter techniques. Hope that uh, clears up any confusion. Thanks for watching.